So today we're going to be talking about eight tips to hitting a rise ball. And let's just talk about all eight of them. First one we're going to talk about, and we're going to get right into it today, um, is experience is key. Experience is huge. Um, the more that you see a rise ball, the more that you can recognize it, the more that you are adjusted, you can adjust your swing to it. So if you have a pitcher in your, on your team that throws a rise ball, huge, I know this isn't always like what your coach does maybe in practice, but a huge benefit to you would be to make sure that you practice hitting that rise ball against that pitcher. So even if you don't do anything in practice with that pitcher, maybe ask um, if you could work on it outside of practice with that pitcher and set up a time where you can actually face her, work on recognizing that rise ball and work on hitting that because the more you see a rise ball, the better. And you're gonna see girls with different kinds of rise balls. You're gonna see girls who can really control it. So by recognizing it early, it's gonna be uh, very beneficial to you. So first thing is experience. Make sure that you practice as much as you can. Second thing, know the pitcher. Before you go into a game, hopefully you know a little bit about what the pitcher is like. Okay, experience, having a little bit of a scouting report, um, making sure that you um, maybe did your homework, maybe watched a game before if you're in a tournament, you watched this pitcher, you know what her strengths and weaknesses might be. Knowing that is huge. If you know that there's a pitcher that relies heavily on that rise ball, that's going to really be beneficial. Okay, now if a pitcher, um, if you don't know anything about the pitcher, then it's your job to make sure that you watch everybody's first at bat. And if you're the first one hitting, well, take a couple pitches. Try to see what are they what are they throwing? Um, are they throwing strikes right away? Are they relying on a high ball? Um, is it a rise ball? Ask other hitters who have gone up against this pitcher. You know, what is she throwing to you? When did she throw the rise ball? And think about when the count was. But really, the most important thing is that you're paying attention. You're paying attention to every single at bat. And if there's a pitcher that throws the rise ball, well, when does she do that? Does she do it when she's ahead of the count? Does she do it when she's behind? Does she do it first pitch? Is there any kind of like a pattern of which she does that? Um, so make sure that you kind of know the pitcher, okay? So that's number two is know the pitcher. Number three, recognize the spin, okay? So if you're a curveball, if you're a right-handed hitter, a curveball is spin that goes away from me. Well, the spin actually, I don't know if you're seeing this the same way, but um, the spin is going to go towards for a right-handed batter, the outside part of the plate. Okay, makes sense, right? Um, a screwball, the spin is coming towards you. Drop ball goes over the top of the ball. A rise ball comes underneath the ball. So it's gonna go straight. The um, spin goes underneath the ball and it's like straight towards the catcher's mitt. At the last second, it rises. But the more that you recognize that spin and the quicker that you recognize that spin, the better advantage that you have. So by seeing the spin on the ball, it really helps you. And my suggestion to you would be it, during practice, if your pitchers are pitching and maybe you're like in between drills or something like that, go to where your pitchers are and just say, can I stand in? Can I stand in while you're pitching um, and just see the spins and see if I'm calling the right pitch that you're pitching? The more you can recognize that, the better. That's why sometimes catchers have a little bit of an advantage when it comes to um, hitting some of those pitches because they can recognize that. They know the spin of the pitcher that they're throwing. Hopefully they do. Hopefully they're being a student of the game and doing that. So that's huge, making sure that um, you recognize that spin. Tip number four, make sure that you stand at the front or the back of the box. Okay. Now, advantages of sit standing in the front of the box is hopefully getting the ball before it rises. Okay. So that's the whole idea behind standing in the front of the box is I want to try to hit the ball before it rises. The tricky thing with that, however, though, is that a lot of pitchers that are really good, they'll be able to control where the ball rises. So they might actually be able to control this, the ball so that it can rise a little bit earlier. Okay, so that's kind of sometimes, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, iffy for some people, but some people really like it. Okay, I would try that out. But what I really like to do against a rise ball pitcher is I like to go in the back of the box. And the reason is because, first of all, the pitcher really has to control the pitch. She has to make sure that, you know, maybe it's a foot uh, further that she has to throw the ball. If it rises too much, hopefully I can recognize that early and I don't swing at it. And I don't swing at it, it's probably going to be a ball. She really has to control her spin because if not, it's going to be a ball. And second of all, um, it, when I'm back further in the box, it'll take me a little bit, give me just a split a little bit more time to see that pitch and to see the spin, to recognize the spin, to see where it's breaking and to hopefully adjust. So um, to me, 
I think that's huge and help and very, very helpful for me. It helps me to lay it off, lay off of the balls a little bit better. And it also helps me to recognize and get my hands adjusted to where they need to be. So that brings me to my next tip. Tip number five. Tip number number five is to keep your hands a little bit higher than you normally do. If you know that pitcher's a rise ball pitcher, keep your hands higher. The reason why you want to keep your hands higher than normal is because a lot of hitters who keep their hands low when they're swinging don't necessarily do well against a rise ball because you're having to bring your hands up at the last second, which causes you then to drop your shoulder. So by keeping your hands nice and high, hopefully this is uh, hel helping to keep your um, hands on playing with the ball, keep your shoulder up. The moment your shoulder drops, that's when we have a problem with the rise ball. That's when people get underneath it and almost have that upper cut of a swing. doesn't quite work. So keep your hands just a touch higher than normal. Um, step number six, you want to make sure that you're swinging level, palm up, palm down all the way through. Okay, so maybe just even avoid that uppercut of your swing sometimes um, that people have on their finish because that can help make you like do that early, drop your shoulder, or almost like tomahawk the ball. I actually had a girl <laughs> on my college team. Um, we were playing Tennessee, and we were playing against Monica Abbott. I don't know if you guys remember Monica Abbott, but whoa. She was like the pitcher. She was awesome. And obviously, she was on the Olympic team, right? So, of course, she had to be awesome. My teammate hit a home run off of Monica Abbott. Now, if you've ever been to Tennessee's field, they have, like, like a throughway and, like, their outfield, but it's, like, a little bit further back. Like, she almost hit the overpass of the throughway. Are you real? Are you serious? Is this real? Um, so, yeah, she almost, she almost hit that thing. Like, she tomahawk this ball and she really did well like whenever you face a rise ball pitcher she did really well against those pitchers and it's because when there was a ball that was high not saying that this is always <laughs> this is not proper form but it really was helpful to her that she almost tomahawked that and swung downward on that pitch because as that was coming up her hands were coming down and controlling that so that it wasn't being popped up it was like going right where it should be so um by swinging level or swinging down on the ball, that's actually a very uh, big advantage for you. So no uppercuts, no uppercuts, because that's when you drop that back shoulder. And that's what you that's when you do what the pitcher wants you to do and pop that ball up. Okay, tip number seven. This is about mentality right here. Focus on what you should be doing. Now, what do I mean by that? Focus on what you should be doing means you want to be sure that you're focusing on things that are going to be helpful to you. You don't want to say, I don't want to swing at the rise ball. Because all your head says is, swing at the rise ball. That's all your brain hears. It doesn't say, don't swing at the rise ball. It just says, swing at the rise ball. It's like this crazy thing. I had a coach when I was younger. Without disclosing information, I won't say the person's name. But um, I had a coach who was like, probably not like my favorite because of things like this. Okay? Things like this. He would say, just don't strike out when you're at the plate. Just don't strike out. Guess what I did more that year than any other year? I struck out more that year than any other year. Because all my brain hurt. And I was kind of like, didn't know the whole like mental part of the game at that point. But all my head heard was strike out. And so... I was trying to not do what I ended up doing, which was strike out. So you want to focus on positive things, what you should be doing. So in my brain, what I would say is focus on a lower release point. I want to focus on maybe a little bit lower uh, release point on her on the pitcher's hip. Okay, so I want to focus on a lower release point. I want to focus on a low pitch. I'm gonna drive. I'm gonna lay off a ball. I'm gonna drive a good pitch. So that's what I'm gonna be thinking. I'm gonna say. All right, I want my front shoulder down. I want to make sure I'm swinging level. I want to get a, a pitch that's released low. Sometimes when pitchers release the ball a little bit higher, they've got that rise ball spin to it. So those are the things I'm going to be telling myself, positive things. I'm not going to say, I don't want to, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to say, I'm going to, blah, blah, blah. And that's going to help me out. I'm telling you, that's huge. That's like what will make you so much more successful as a hitter when you're thinking positively. It's crazy how much that happens. And then lastly, oh, this is a tip that I actually, that I kind of, um, I, like, I'm probably pretty sure I made this one up of the whole world. Like, if anybody ever tells you this, it probably came from me. I'm just that famous. Okay, maybe not. 
Maybe not. Maybe I'm not the first person to think of this, but I like to think I am because this is something that really helped me out a ton with hitting a rise ball. And that is keeping your helmet low. Keeping your helmet low. And the reason why you want to keep your helmet low is because by doing that, you can actually um, see where the ball is in contrast to your helmet. And it actually helps to take the glare off of the ball. So similar to like what eye black does, it takes the glare off the ball for outfielders. That also is what keeping your helmet low will do for you when you're seeing the rise ball. So that really helps me and I can actually see the ball either coming closer to my brim of my helmet or staying on plane. And that actually helps me a lot in laying off a rise ball or else keeping my hands high because I recognize it early. So that's my eighth tip. So let me go over them for you so that you kind of know um, what we went over. And then you can watch the replay if you really want to get like the details of this. Um, first thing, like I said, number one tip is experience. Experience is key to hitting the rise ball. And the reason why it is is because the more you see it, the more you can recognize it and the better you can be at either holding back at it or keeping your hands high and level through it. Second of all is know the pitcher. Before you go to bat, hopefully you've seen the pitcher or you have like some kind of a scouting report as to which pitches are her like bread and butter. Like what is her best pitch, right? And if you don't know, well then every time someone's up to bat, you should be watching to see what pitches she's throwing and what pitches are like her, her that she relies on. So by knowing that pitcher and by learning, becoming that student of a game always, that's going to be super helpful. Number three is spin. Make sure that you're recognizing the spin. The spin goes under on a rise ball, and it's coming um, right like towards the catcher's glove underneath. So you want to be able to recognize that spin. It's not coming over top of the ball. It's not going a side spin. It's going to be coming underneath very quickly. It's a very quick spin. Oftentimes, pitchers with really long fingers. I don't have long fingers, so. But pitchers with really long fingers are really good at the rise ball. Um, either stand in the front or the back of the box so you can either catch the ball before it rises, but good pitchers can adjust to that, or you're super far back in the box so that you can um, really have the pitcher pitch it under control and you can see it, recognize it, and then lay off of it. Um, number five is to make sure that you keep your hands a little bit higher. When you have your hands low, you're more likely to drop that back shoulder, get underneath the pitch. Uh, number six, make sure that you swing linear or downward. And I talked about one of my friends who hit a home run off of Monica Abbott, like Monica Abbott, like Olympian, because she actually tomahawked that ball and had a downward swing on her rise ball. It was crazy. Almost hit like the overpass of the throughway. I'm pretty sure it's still in the air flying around the world. Like that's how hard it was. Mm. That was a joke. <laughs> but yeah, no, she really did hit a home run. And, um, Actually, she hit a home run off of a lot of rise ball pitchers, and she was really good at that. She was really good at keeping her arms nice and level or, like, swinging down, downward on that. Number seven is focus on what you should be doing. Don't, um, don't say to yourself, I don't want to swing at the rise ball or lay off the rise ball. Like, those are negative types of things. You want to be thinking positive. So you want to think, like, okay, I'm going to watch for a low release from the pitcher. Okay, I'm going to swing at a low pitch. I'm going to keep my hands high. I'm going to keep my shoulder high. I'm going to keep my front shoulder low. You know, things that you need to be doing rather than things that you don't want to be doing. The moment you say, I don't want to do this, all your brain is hearing is that you want to do it. You know, so if I'm saying to myself, don't strike out, all my brain is thinking is strike out. Right? So you want to focus on what you should be doing. Getting a good pitch. Um, driving through the ball. Staying on the top of the ball. That sort of thing. And then number eight is keep your helmet low. That takes the glare off the pitch. That helps you to see um, where the ball is in relation to where you are. So hopefully that was very helpful for you. Um, just another tip for you guys. I Two days in a row, baby. Two days in a row I've been periscoping. So I'm excited about that. Getting back on track and coming at you guys. So go check me out. Softballwins.com. I'm um, also on Instagram at, at winning softball, or if you look on Facebook, I'm also, my like page is winning softball. So I'm pretty much winning softball everywhere. Unfortunately, the domain was not available for um, my website, but it's softballwins.com.